Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, must-have early childhood apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge and today I want to talk about some must-have early childhood apps. And the apps I call must-have uh, are connected to two things. One is if you are having children engage with mobile devices, especially the iPad, you want to have apps that are actually teaching them things. So instead of just having them pick whatever game or whatever activity they like, you can use some fantastic apps that provide a lot of options. And the second thing that I've done when choosing this is I've chosen apps that have either been researched themselves, so apps that have been used by others and have some research to support them, or apps that have general research that support their use, so other apps like them were researched and they were found to be useful. So these are really research-supported apps. And the first one I want to talk about is PBS Kids. PBS Kids is a great app for those who like PBS shows but are not necessarily there when they are being shown on TV because you are attached to a TV schedule but here you can use it without being attached to a TV schedule. You can also get on this app the TV schedule. So there are multiple layers to this app and you can see that on the right you get to choose the kind of shows you're interested in. And let's uh, look at this show. So you can see that the show shows up and you can actually make it a little bit bigger so you can do it full screen or you can do it as partial screen and kids can jump between uh, episodes and you can actually browse more specifically so you can see what shows are available uh, there are two full episodes available you can buy more full episodes but as a parent you have to pay for them so this is a way to access some of the shows not all of the shows that are available on PBS if you look here uh, we can try a different show and you'll see that again what we're getting is all the available episodes. In this case there are seven episodes available, one new one. So this is a great way to have kids be able to watch episodes on the device without being uh, connected to the uh, timetable of TV. And if you see you can uh, scroll the parents uh, bar and then you can get TV times, you can get closed captioning and you can get general information about this app so you can actually get a description of what this show is about, what uh, kids can learn from it. And we do know that PBS produces shows for young children that actually have been proven to help in various ways and uh, really provide some support for learning. So this is PBS Kids and that's my first must-have app for early childhood. The second one that I want to talk about is Learning with Homer and or for short Homer and Learn with Homer is an app that includes a lot of things that are around literacy and creativity and you can see that there are lots of things to choose from. Let's choose the Learn to Read and in Learn to Read you work from the basic building blocks all the way up through uh, phonemic awareness and uh, the knowledge of letters and sounds and everything that comes with it. So let's see what it looks like and this is, you can see that one of the things I love about Homer is you can advance with the lessons but you can also download multiple lessons at once and that means that kids can play without being on actively online at all times. This is really important if you're on the road and you don't necessarily have Wi-Fi access the whole time. So you can look at this lesson. So this is again a great way to introduce sounds and I, what I love about this app and it's appropriately so for early childhood, it is based mostly on the app talking back at you and guiding you through not on written instructions. So now we're making the ah sound for alligator and there's a lot of support as you go through. But So 
So we go through and it's a sound at the beginning of the word, at the middle of the word, and now, very importantly, there's the way you make that sound with your mouth. So you get to see somebody else make it and then you get to make it on your own. Ah. Uh, and you get feedback on the sound that you made and then you uh, move forward and there's more here they're talking about the letters uppercase and lowercase so this is learn with homer and this is one of the features it's the phonemic awareness and basic reading feature but on top of that you have other features for example story time and we know that digital stories as long as they don't have too many things to distract students from the actual thing that's happening so if they don't have enough uh, too many interactive games or other activities that don't support the content they actually support comprehension so um, let's look at a folklore story and you can see that some of them are available for free and some of them are locked you can pay uh, the fee and get access to more or you can use and there's quite a bit available even without paying any more so i would argue that you want to start by uh, using what's available for free and if you like what you have and if you're willing to invest in it you can get a full license and be able to access all the rest of the stories and that's a fairly common practice um, I'll go to a story that I have downloaded and again you can have two options read to me or I'll read it let's use the read to me Homer has the hiccups Nip and Nap tell Homer to try holding his breath. It doesn't work. So you can see how this works and um, it's very simple it tells the stories and you can participate uh, one last feature that I want to uh, share here and you can see that there are other features as well is the draw a picture feature and that allows kids to be creative and use the iPad to make something of their own and you can use uh, you can use the stamp to create plants uh, or leaves and then you can use the colors to create leaves of different colors or uh, you can use just lines to create other things so you can easily create uh, in the drawing features and then it's saved as a picture and you can share it with others so that's another way that Homer is this kind of a suite that allows kids to learn many things from one app and what I like about it is that then you don't have to download a lot of apps and you don't have to look at a lot of apps you've got a lot of possible activities and learning and creativity all in one app so this is learn with Homer the next one is one I've shared before and this is called Farfaria and this is a huge collection of uh, stories that are available online and you can download them into your device again you can download more if you pay a subscription fee but you get an incredible collection of books and updated daily with new stories or books showing up and you've got both informational and uh, narrative text so you can read stories or you can read about things like bugs so let's open a book and see what that looks like and again you can read to me you can autoplay or I can read to myself and you can see that the controls are very very simple so even young kids can use it very easily they walk crawl swim and fly all over the world there are more of them than any other kind of animal on earth and they have been around for over 350 million years so you can see how they're trying to generate excitement it is very clearly reading read and you have the control show up on top so you can make it favorite you can share it with other students or you can just play and stop as you feel comfortable you can look at the picture there in more detail and then move forward and Farfaria again is a great collection uh, very well selected books different kind of topics different kind of uh, bands so you can see uh, that this is a great resource to get kids to read and more than that one of the things we're discovering with research is that in these apps kids actually take more control 
of the reading process and they read on their own or they use the read to me features uh, and take ownership. The last one that I want to talk about in the early childhood apps is a, a collection of apps from a studio called First Aid, First Eight Studios. And these are done with WGBH in Boston. And these are apps connected to learning about math. And I'm going to show you only one, but you can search birth, uh, First Eight Studios and that'll give you the other ones as well. And here it's all about learning math and it's concepts of math. It's not necessarily just counting or making simple calculations, but it's actually about the basic concepts. And in Birthday Cafe, and I'm in level two because I'm that advanced, you get to put people in their right seats and then they have to be served the right number of dishes. So if you put three, you'll say, no, you're wrong, they need only two. Where's the seat? So you can see how you get feedback, you get a clear idea of what they're looking for, there are practice levels, and now we've got three. So they're working slowly through number concepts and making sure you can match it with different kinds of objects and with different colors, meaning that they're really trying to get you the concept of just there are three objects and not necessarily that the colors and the kinds of objects they are do not necessarily matter. Oh, that wasn't for me. So you see, again, feedback, slow progress, making sure you get the concepts. And if you make multiple mistakes, they come up and explain and walk you through how you would do it correctly. So this one is called Birthday Cafe. It's a great app, but more than that, you want to get the rest of these apps from First Aid Studios. Great research, great development. So today, I talked about four apps that would really enhance early childhood education with mobile devices, and I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.